Welcome to the Paper Talk podcast, where we have candid conversations with emerging artists and industry leaders about all things paper flowers. Through this podcast, we hope to continue to share knowledge, connect all of us together, and elevate the artistry of each and every one of us. Hello, I'm Quinn Wen. I'm Jesse Chu. I'm Priscilla Park. Our mission is to share, connect, and elevate the paper floral industry. We are some of the voices behind the Paper Floors Collective. Welcome to our podcast, Paper Talk. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode number 25. Today, Jesse and I, over coffee, we're going to be talking about tools of the trade. So we're going to be talking about what you would be using for making paper flowers. Like besides the crepe paper, we want to focus on the tools, which is pretty much your scissors, your glue, anything else that we think is helpful, special to creating better paper flowers. So I'm going to turn the question to you, Jesse. <laughs> I know. This is such a good topic. We were talking about this before we started. We're like, yeah. oh, besides scissors, there's like a whole... I think tools are great for, it's almost like having a garage and you're having all these amazing tools and you Mm -hmm. know how the husband always has all these amazing garage tools (laughs) and the wife has all these amazing kitchen tools. Yeah. Having the right tool does make the job easier. It's not necessary. It does. Like yeah. I was giving the example of the garlic presser. You yeah. can, having a garlic presser is great, but you can easily use the back of your knife or the side of the knife to yes. get the same result. It's just yes. a little bit more time and effort. Yeah. We want to talk Absolutely. about <laughs> so we want to talk about the tools of how to make your job a little bit easier. And let's tar- start with scissors. My favorite scissors, mm-hmm. as everybody knows, are the Kai scissors. And they're mainly for sewing and they're a Japanese company, but luckily I actually have the wholesale company here in the state of Washington. They're only like 30 minutes away. I love them. So they're super amazing, super fast on ordering supplies. They're definitely one of the really popular scissors for paper artists. I can't even say paper flower artists, just paper artists Exactly. Because they cut like butter. They're so sharp. They are very sharp. I've I've had mine for like four years and I do rotate them out and I specifically only use them for certain papers. Mm -hmm. Like I'll keep my German one with my German, my Italian with my Italian and just using the same material over and over really helps your scissors stay sharper longer. And of course, take them to the, the knife sharpening place because they'll, they'll resharpen your scissors for you and re-oil them for you, which is yeah. always fun. So yeah. maintaining and carrying your tools will make them last even longer. For sure. What's your um, favorite scissors? Uh, huh. I have to say, I use a variety, uh, just based on length mm-hmm. of the scissors. Um, yeah. Like you said, because you, know, you have your favorite scissors and I know the one that you're referring to, they're very versatile for sure. The length of it, I don't, do you know what the length of it is? It's eight inch. Eight inch. Yeah. So the one that I do use the longer, like the heavy duty one from Fisker. And that one I use to cut my crepe paper just to prepare it. Yeah. Just because it's long and it's heavy duty. And yeah. instead of using that big tool. The guillotine cutter. The guillotine. Yeah. Cutter. I use that because I'm lazy. Mm-hmm. So I just cut through with the big Fisker ones. And then I use, and then I have a smaller Kai one. Mm-hmm. And those are great for detailing. Cause like you said, yeah, they're the and so and sharp. Time. Yes. They're super sharp. And the tip and is super super sharp. The That's tip why is really sharp. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so if you need to get it, you know, when you're trying to make two cuts and you're trying to meet in the middle or mm-hmm. meet in the cut, I guess yep. where the cuts meet. Yeah. Those are perfect. And then, but for Great fringing, for- you like my, my spring loaded ones, really? the micro tip ones. Yeah. And those ones, I always tell people they're my favorite because they're for me personally, anyways, it's a little bit easier on my hands because they're spring loaded. They do spring back into my hands yeah. without me having to open my scissors. And so it's, for me, it's a little bit easier. They are shorter though, meaning that because the blades are shorter, you can't do like super long fringes with them. And the Kai scissors are great for that because when they're like nice and new or oiled, yes. they, they're so buttery. They just like slide I back know. and forth. It's great. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> so I know, I know. And, I've, and when you brought the ones over that you use for the Toronto work, shop. Yeah. I mean, those are so versatile. Like the length of it is mm-hmm. vers- versatile in terms of yeah. making shortcuts or longer cuts that are comfortable. Cuts, with they're hands. really fantastic for yeah. little uh, details to the edges of the petals. Yeah. Yeah. Surprisingly so, even though they're actually longer than mm-hmm. the Kai scissors I use and yeah. the swing loaded. But I mean, I'm referring to the Kai scissors that, that yeah. Kai brought to the mm-hmm. Toronto workshop. But I think at the end of the day, I think it's just what you're used to. And what your hand oh. is comfortable. Yeah. Your hands is different. Yeah. And so you really need to find a comfort fit because you're mm-hmm. holding your scissors. And besides, sure. you know, if you're doing this, make sure you stretch your hand a lot. <laughs> I've been working on this project and my hand, I feel like it's crimping it's up cramping. a little bit. Mm-hmm. And so you just make sure you stretch it out. Just take a moment, just press your fingers on the table and just spread it out. 
and yeah, stretch as much as for you can. Sure. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I think the bottom line is, yeah, yeah. you know, use them, try them out and mm-hmm. um, see if they're comfortable in your hands. Like Kun said, I mean, some, some, we all have different size hands, right? Exactly. And so the way that we open the scissors and close them um, can define how long we need the blade to be. So yeah, always better to try them. But I mean, generally, yeah. I, if they're I mean, generally, I guess most of us use either Kai scissors or Fiskars, which are really easy to find. Yes. Um, they're American companies. So, mm-hmm. oh, let's talk about the guillotine um, cutter mm. real quick. Yes. One reason why I use guillotine cutter and I use them both for Italian crepe paper and German is that I want my petals to be the same size and they're super easy to like cut them by the width and then, and then cut them individually. So I find it super easy. And if you want to cut them like individual rectangular pieces, so all your pieces are the same, I just measure them out and just, and they're so fast and it Mm -hmm. saves my scissors for the more detail cutting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, I, I got one of those for our Toronto workshop Mm -hmm. and they saved us a lot of time trying to cut like pre-measured widths Mm -hmm. for students, but also, you know, for yourself, if you're going to be yeah. using that to cut yeah. petals. Yeah. So if you guys are looking for a guillotine cutter, I've tried several. Do not get the plastic one. The plastic one do not work well with Italian crepe paper. Mm-hmm. You want the wooden board. The Westcott one trimmer are the best one that I found. And I ended up buying two of them. So I have a backup because I use them a lot and they started getting dull. <laughs> like, how do I sharpen this? <laughs> it's true. My knife oh, sharpener. Sharpen I don't know. I, I, asked my I wouldn't. Co- yeah. I wouldn't go with your knife sharpener. It's the same yeah. thing with scissors. Don't use your knife sharpener with scissors because the blades will not meet again. They won't be flat. Yeah. So Take it I to a professional you, place. Yeah, you would have to go to a professional yeah. place for that. But I, did, I asked my professional local knife sharpener for the guillotine and they don't do that. So I'm like... <laughs> So that's why I had to buy a second one. <laughs> it's, very, it's a very like specific trade. I guess I they only do certain things. They only have tools to sharpen yeah, certain, certain exactly. blades. Yeah, That's hilarious. I know. <laughs> it's like, where else would you go? I have heard that you can use foil. That's right. And I have tried it, but I honestly think it's not as effective. Uh, I mean, like it's all right, but it's, I don't think you're going to get like a super sh- sharp blade back yeah. to, you know, you know when you started it. You know how when you have the knife and you have that long... Um, um, sharpening tools at mm-hmm. home to sharpen you keep your knife sharp mm-hmm. that's what I would use the foil for mm-hmm. you kind of maintain it but to get the really good sharpening you have to take it to a professional place yeah for sure mm-hmm. for sure or buy new ones <laughs> <laughs> I know. Sometimes it's cheaper. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, those Kai scissors are not, in, I mean, they're not inexpensive, but they're not expensive. Um, they're fairly affordable. I mean, even this year is fairly affordable. So yeah. it might Kai's, just be easier to have them. Kai's are a little bit more expensive, but yeah. they're really worth it. I love Yeah. Them. And how would people buy the Kai scissors if uh, they can't buy them like wholesale? They can go in the Kai.com. They actually, if you go to any sewing or quilting trade show, they're always mm-hmm. there. That will probably be the best pricing, but you can always go to their website, kai.com. They're a United States uh, wholesale company, but they're originated from Japan. Yeah. And I mean, we're just mentioning Kai and Fisker, but there are so many other brands out there. Mm-hmm. I think not worrying too much about the brand is important because whatever is available and it works for you, it works for you. Exactly. You know, so kitchen scissors or <laughs> embroidery scissors or, you know, fabric scissors. Honestly, whatever works for you, I think is yeah. Because Kai scissors are fabric scissors, really. Mm-hmm. So just look outside of other industry and see what they have and what they're raving about. See if we can pull it into the paper flower. Community. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Let's talk about Oh, you know, blue. No, before we move on, let's talk okay. about the scissors, the surrogated. Oh, yes, yes, scissors. yes. We're going to talk about that. Yes. Yes. So Susan Bond was the one that actually introduced me to the three millimeter surrogated scissors. Mm-hmm. And I ended up using them for making teeny tiny petals. Because mm-hmm. you think individual petals on a one millimeter petal mm-hmm. is very, very hard. Mm-hmm. And just yes. able to like cut it where it's surrogated. It looks like the top of the petal tips and then going yeah. back and just fringing them. Yeah. They look like real petals. So quick tip. Can you use those on <laughs> fine crepe paper or just double it or something heavier? You can actually, use, I would, if you're using extra fine, just fold it up multiple times to mm-hmm. give it a little bit more structure and then just cut it through. So yeah. it even makes it even faster. So when I fold it into like an accordion mm-hmm. and then I cut the tip, I yeah. keep it in place and then come back and cut in between the lines yeah. and then you're done super fast. That's awesome. But it worked for like Italian and double-sided and extra fine. So it's very versatile. Oh, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
as I was telling you, I was always like a little bit skeptical about serrated serrated scissors mm-hmm. only because a lot of them out there are not that great quality and they're not very sharp. Exactly. They don't work very well, but I guess if you find the perfect one, yeah. yes, you have to experiment. Exactly. <laughs> you have to see which ones are good, but when you do, they do save you a lot of time. So that's awesome. Yep. And we'll list all the tools that we talk about down below in the blog. So that yeah. way, if you want to check it out, you're more than welcome to. We'll link it to Amazon because I feel like that's the easiest platform for mm-hmm. everyone if they want to look at it because there's some reviews, quick and easy to buy, free shipping. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about glue. Yes. So many types of glue, you guys. Mm-hmm. Of course, our favorite that I commonly use for both my Italian and my double-sided and my extra fine is a Lean's tacky glue. And the really cool thing about Lean's is not only do they have the regular tacky glue, they have the fast grabbing, they have the slow grabbing. There's like one specifically for drools, one specifically for sewing. They have a lot of different glues. So because ex- mm-hmm. you never know, even though it says certain things, try it on paper and see mm-hmm. how it reacts to the project that you're working on. Because sometimes you want a really fast one. Sometimes you need it to be extra slow so you can like maneuver it and change it a little bit. Yeah. And it's amazing. They come in different sizes too. Yes. <laughs> they come in like the small, the one ounce. The one ounce. ounce. Yeah, Three exactly. Ounce. <laughs> so like whatever suits you. And they I also have, have a giant tub, 64 yes. ounces. <laughs> I have a giant tub. Okay. Let me tell you about the giant tub. <laughs> totally. <laughs> it's not that it's not usable. Mm-hmm. It is usable. Yes. It's not very practical. No, it's not. Because it doesn't come with a spout where you can pour it into something. So you need to use like a big ass spoon yes. to like ladle it in. And so it's, messy. Messy. it's messy to get it into <laughs> these like, yeah, like the one or two ounce too. ones. Yes. So it's I so mean hard. like, yeah. So I bought it on sale. I was like, this is perfect. Um, <laughs> but no, not very usable. <laughs> Recently, I've found some use for it. I will. And one of the tricky things with tacky glue is that it's tacky, right? It yes. like dries pretty fast. So it's really sticky but um one of yeah recently what i started doing was i just used it directly from the tub and just put it into like a yogurt container and i was using a plastic spoon Mm -hmm. to laminate my 180 grams and uh that's just because i was had plastic spoons lying around and you can just you know throw it out once you're done Mm -hmm. but it it scrapes it really well across the paper perfect but that's the only way that i've been able to find and and honestly it is a little bit faster than like you know squeezing it out of the bottle but that is like the only way that i've been able to find like a good use of it without it getting everywhere mm-hmm. and being a really a pain yeah. trying to clean it up too. Yep. So, I mean, it looks like it's actually too good to be true. Um, I would just stick with the, tubes. the, the squeeze <laughs> tubes. Yeah. And like the tubes that you got for the masterclass, those are cool too. Yeah. Um, they're easier refill. Yeah. They're like, they're not the, to describe it because some people don't know what we're referring to, but uh, to describe it, it's like a, it's like, you know, the regular tacky glues come in a hard shell. Mm -hmm. The ones that you brought to the masterclass are the ones that come in a softer, I guess, container. What are they equivalent to? Toothpaste? Yeah. It's like a toothpaste Mm -hmm. container. So it's like easily squeezable. The only thing is, yeah, I think some people had some issues with, and when I ordered it once also on Amazon, it blew up. Oh no. I think it's probably the the way that they bounded it at the yeah. base. Mm-hmm. It's not as secure as the hard the hard bottles. Mm-hmm. But those are really good because they're like upside down naturally, right? So yep. they like squeeze out. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that leans tacky glue. Yeah. But I mean, there's so many other glues that people use. Yep. And the really cool thing is they actually now have a pin. And so you can actually, yeah, those are really, really fantastic. Inga from the Posy Box has been using it quite a bit and it has so much better control if you're doing really detailed work. And she found a way to refill them in a very easy way. So we're putting a video together and it'll be released soon. So everyone can like check it out and Mm -hmm. use those pins because they've been amazing. That's pretty cool. I know they also have glue sticks. So they do dry a lot faster. They do. But I mean, I just use the Elmer ones, like Mm -hmm. the school glue sticks. For laminating the stamens, right? For laminating stamens, laminating stuff that, (laughs) a smaller stuff. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I use that because it's cleaner. It's easier. (laughs) Just open the cap and you just do that. You don't need any other, you know, you don't need another tool to Mm -hmm. apply it onto the paper. The only thing with glue stick is it is more, it it tends to be more wet, Mm -hmm. which is ironic. You don't think it'd be wet, but it is wet. So it does take longer to dry and doesn't have the same effect as glue, but Mm -hmm. you know. It's a different way of using it. Yeah, it's just a different way. And then the only other one that I use is a glue glue gun. And I only use it for specific things. 180, but it changes the color of it a little bit, I've noticed. 
this. Yeah. But if you want something fast grabbing and you're doing like yeah. centers. If you do like, yeah. Or like heavy, you know, if you're using like heavy pedals, like pedals mm-hmm. that are big, obviously you're going to use yep. that, right? Yeah. Because tacky glue is just not going to stick or you can have to wait forever for <laughs> yes. it to stick. Because <laughs> it's such a large surface. It yeah. It's, such a large, it's just forget it. You know, it's just faster using yep. glue gun, yep. more secure. If you're using styrofoam balls, you'll have to use hot glue, glue gun. gun because anything that is plastic, any styrofoam, like styrofoam, it's uh, not penetrable by the glue because glue needs to grab onto something or white glue needs to grab onto something and styrofoam doesn't, and plastic doesn't do that. Otherwise, like, I don't know. I think it's just your mm-hmm. preference, to be yeah. honest. And also like Amity Bean, a floor bean, she's been using these white glue or clear glue, right? Clear glue. It's like yeah. a school glue. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, I mean, really anything works. The only thing is the reason why we like the tacky glue is because it dries quickly yep. and it's not, it doesn't soak through the water soak through the paper as much. Yeah, exactly. So especially if you're working with fine crepe paper, um, if you use like just a regular white glue, you'll notice that it's very liquidy. It's very, it flows very well. It's fantastic, but it gets soaked into this fine crepe paper and yep. then the fine crepe paper does not stick because it's just drenched in water, like liquid. Exactly. Yeah, it's water so that's, Yeah, exactly. That's why the tacky glue is so much better is because it's stickier. Mm-hmm. It dries faster. It doesn't absorb into the fine crepe paper the same way. So I think you do have to kind of, you know, understand the nature and the pers- like the characteristics of the glue and make your own decision. Tacky glue, what's the price difference? I think tacky glue is slightly more expensive. Yeah. Than regular like Elmer glue, right? double the cost because yeah. usually like a small school glue is like what, 65 cents or something like that? I'm not sure. I mean, our pricing in Canada is a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I remember seeing that tacky glue is slightly more expensive. Yeah. But like you really don't use that much glue, right? So yes. um, worth investment if you want to try it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Let's move on. Our last tool topic. Let's talk about using analytic tools for curling, for yep. whatever. For forming the petals. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. Uh, yeah. What's your favorite? My favorite is my eight gauge. I really love the eight gauge wire. I always have it on hand because they're used for stiffing up the stem if I have a really large flower, but it's really great because the the eight gauge is so thick. Mm -hmm. I use it for curling petals, for forming the tubes. It's just really super handy and for roughing up or the petal a little bit. Mm -hmm. I know uh, Wendy introduced me to the golden tool, which is fantastic because it has that sharp angle to get even Mm -hmm. more detail. And Mm -hmm. then it has a fat end. So if you want to curl your petals softer, you would use a thicker end. And so I mm-hmm. like having that two different sizes to work with, which is really great. Do you want to describe that to our so followers it, who are actually it, listening? So it's called a needling scribe tool is what you would search for. And it's pretty much has like a sharp point on one side and then it has a handle, either a wooden handle or a plastic handle on the other side. And I would say it's only about two, three millimeters in diameter for one of the ends. And then the other end is like a little, it tapers off pretty much. And mm-hmm. so, but it's great for like having some sort of tool where you can actually curl the ends, add little ruffling edges, just run the, the tool on the edge of the petals and it'll ruffle your petals really quick mm-hmm. and easy. Yeah. So that's one thing I love about that. Yeah. I mean, when she showed me the image, I was like, oh, that's so cool. Like it, it actually is gold. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not the handle, but the actual, the metal part. Exactly. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a, like a, she has a vintage one. She yeah. Vintage. A, yeah, yeah. That's why she calls it a golden tool. Yeah. Uh, it's really cool. Actually, if you go to her podcast, which I think was the first, first one. one. Yeah. Um, there's an image of her golden tool on the blog. So you yep. can go check that out. But I mean, it's similar to all. And mm-hmm. I know some people use alls. We know Tiffany Turner uses hat pins. If we have a hat pin, that's really cool too. So my think- preference is a 16 gauge because that's what I have flying around. <laughs> but I have to say a 16 gauge probably is not as strong as an eight gauge because it it's not skinny. as thick. Yeah, because it is skinny. Um, but I mean, it really depends on the size of, let's say for curling, the size of your curls. If you want really tight ones, then you use a thinner gauge. Yep. If you want some or something with a, a tool that is a lot, mm-hmm. you know, a narrow, uh, like a thinner. But if you want to use, you know, you want bigger curls and you use something bigger. Mm-hmm. Um, I know Anna likes using her scissors. So, and that's really popular as well. You get a really nice, like natural flow when you yeah. use scissors to curl. Yeah. But the only thing is make sure you use an old pair because mm. it will, it will <laughs> like wear down your scissors even for faster. sure. <laughs> for sure. So if you have and, an old pair that you're going to toss out just right on there in the Sharpie, this is only for curling your petals. For curling. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just, I don't know if she's outside, inside. I don't know. But yeah. she's a scissors and it's pretty effective. It is. It's yeah. like using curling your ribbon. Yeah. 
So yeah. it's pretty much the same idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but really, I think as we talk about tools, it's like, yeah. think outside the box. If you have something laying around, try it out. See yeah. what this tool will actually do. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's the most important thing is like yeah. learning. It doesn't have what, to be, yeah. yeah, it doesn't have to be fancy. Like whatever works for you. You don't have to go out and grab something. Whatever works for you. I know some people use chopsticks too. Yeah. Um, Skewers. Yeah. Skewers for sure. At the, like workshops, I bring skewers all the time because they're just inexpensive. Exactly. Um, If they break or, if, you know, glue sticks them, you just throw them out and grab another mm-hmm. one. I don't, yeah. I don't think it has to be anything really special. It's just whatever works for you. What else? I think that's about it. And yeah. Anything else you guys can think about? Yeah. Um, so drop leave a comment. Com- yeah. Yeah. Let us know. What's your favorite tool? Let us know what it is. And also you guys, this is going to be so cool. So as you know, Jessie is actually going to be releasing her book. Her book's coming out very, very soon. Yeah. And one of the things that I persuade Jesse to do is she's going to give <laughs> a signed copy, you guys. So yeah. she's gonna it and it's open international. Yes. So we're going to do a drawing where if you leave a comment, that'll put you in the drawing and we're going to have it open pretty much the month of November and yeah. it'll in on December 1st. Yeah. So, so leave us a comment underneath the this podcast mm-hmm. and the subsequent two or three podcasts and leave us either a review or suggestion or comment, anything, make sure that you include your name, your full name. When you are writing in your comment, there is an option for you to add your name and email so that we can contact you if you win. And if you don't want to put your email public, just email it to us. Yeah. And then just copy your comment on there and that way we'll have it and we'll be able to reach you if you win, which is going to be Oh my God, Jessie was just showing me her book because she got an advanced copy. It's almost (laughs) 300. Hundred pages long. It's a hefty one. <laughs> um, it's if you guys haven't heard of it, it's called Paper Flower Art. And just a short description of it. You know, there's two parts. One part is full of flower tutorials and foliage tutorials, and then the second part is five arrangements where I teach you how to use the flowers that you made in part one to make a beautiful arrangement. So, love it. Hopefully, that will be uh, of interest to you guys. Yes, um, I can't wait to get my copies. What are you <laughs> yeah. talking about? <laughs> so, uh, in the UK, it's going to be released November 7th, something along those lines. And then in the North America, it'll be in January. I think January 7th or something, something similar as well. Mm-hmm. So uh, between that time, we are going to be doing a couple of giveaways, but this is going to be the very first one. So we're super excited about that. Yay. And, and you'll get it before everyone else, which you is will, awesome. You will get it before everyone else, especially if you're in North America or yeah. international, actually. <laughs> Anywhere other than the UK, you will get it before anyone else. So yeah, December 1st is the deadline for mm-hmm. leaving your review and being being entered into the draw. And then after that, on our podcast, we will announce the winner. Yes. So stay tuned for those podcasts too. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jesse. Oh, you're welcome. So excited. <laughs> really excited to share this guy, uh, this with you guys. Yeah. It's been like a year, more than a year's worth of work. Yeah, so yeah. So crazy. It's going to be exciting. So yeah. much work. Oh, it is. <laughs> That's for another podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yes, it's exciting. Yeah. Okay. Thanks well, thank guys. You. Yep. Thank you so much for joining us today and uh, leave a comment enter into the drawing and we can't wait to hear what your favorite tool is or if you're loving the paper talk podcast let us know i mean anything that is encouraging us to find more great speakers more topics we would love that so much thank you so much for listening bye guys bye